The message for this morning is titled, Follow the Right Star. We're going to begin with uh, the scriptures. So if you get your Bibles ready, you get your phone apps, get whatever devices you need. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. I will give you a moment to get yourselves acclimated with your tools. And we know that the Bible is a tool for us to use daily. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, I will read that for you or with you. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star. It rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child." As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped. It stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and the mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I pray that you would speak your word to our hearts this morning, that we would receive your word, Father God, that it would be reality in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The wise men, led by a star, traveled to Bethlehem, and they were coming from a very, very long distance. You see, they were coming from the other side of the Arabian desert. Their journey was intentional. It wasn't a mistake. This truth had been revealed to them, and they looked to the star to guide them in terms of the journey they were to take. Their journey, their travels had a specific purpose. No challenges, no difficult moments, no hesitation. Nothing was going to deter them from the assignment that they had been given. They came prepared. They came prepared and they were looking for a king. They came so prepared that they came with gifts 
for the king. They came to see, they came to honor, and they wanted to anoint as true royalty the newborn king. Their path was steady. Their path was direct. They were led by the star, and they followed it faithfully. And you can imagine the miles that they had to travel. Some think it was weeks. Some might think it was a month, their travel. Some might even say that possibly it was a year because they were covering a long distance of time. And I stand in wonder thinking they were never deterred. They were never stopped thinking that they were not going to accomplish this assignment that they were given. They were steady. They were faithful. They were obedient. And upon arrival to the house, they saw the child Jesus with his mother Mary. And their response was immediate. They began to worship him. They gave their gifts of gold of frankincense and myrrh. They were all costly elements fit for a king. And in that time period, there were just certain gifts that were acceptable to a king. You just didn't give anything to a king. There were select items that you presented to the king out of honor. The men, the wise men, wanted to acknowledge Christ as king. It was a holy moment, a holy moment of worship. And they were worshiping Jesus at this very, very, very special moment. Yet, you have Herod, who's designing a plan to kill Jesus. He wanted to maintain his authority He wanted to maintain his legacy. He wanted to maintain his throne of power. And he did not want to be replaced. So here we have the wise men in one hand worshiping and glorifying Jesus. And yet on the other hand, you have Herod who's plotting, who's planning, who's designing a plan of assassination. He wanted to know where the child was located, but it was not to worship Jesus. His plans were to kill not only Jesus, his plan was also to kill the wise men. And this is an excellent example how Jesus comes to save, to restore, to make new again. But Satan comes as your enemy to kill, to destroy, and to steal. He is not your friend. Let me repeat that. He is not your friend. And there's an, another element here. When at any time we are tempted, never think that you are tempted by God. The scripture says that God never ever tempts, tempts us. Temptation comes through our flesh or our selfish desires, or it can come from the enemy to kill, to steal, to destroy. And because God is so true to his word, God sent an angel to Joseph. And the angel warned Joseph and says, listen, you have to escape this night. You have to take Jesus and Mary, and you have to go to Egypt. Egypt is going to be your place of safety until Herod dies. No one stops God. No one stops his plans. Joseph was able to escape with his family and get to Egypt. God always brings victory to his plans. His will is always accomplished. Sometimes we begin to contemplate that and we start saying, God, when, when, when are you going to answer? Be faithful. Be steady 
as the wise men. Continue to worship and praise the Lord and await for your answer. And Joseph that night got up, took his family. You see, Joseph was obedient to the warning that he was given. Jesus came from heavenly peace to endure the cross so that we would be made clean of sin through the blood, his blood. His life is an ointment, an ointment or a salve. These elements are used to soothe things, to bring healing to things. When a person gets a cut, they bring out the antibiotic ointment. And in a spiritual sense, Jesus is our ointment. Jesus is our salve. He poured out unto us healing, wholeness, deliverance, and he rescues us from all of those horrid moments that we go through. He soothes that pain. He soothes that suffering with his mercy, his grace, and above all else, his love. Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is your high priest. Do you know that Jesus right now is praying for you? And he never stops praying for you. You don't have to feel discouraged thinking, oh my goodness, no one is praying for me. No one has my back. No one, no one is reaching out to me. Be confident that if Jesus is your savior, he is your high priest. He never stops thinking about you. He never stops praying for you. And Jesus is the prophet of the nations. Jesus was born for all people. His salvation is for all people in every nation. He does not distinguish between age, race. He does not distinguish whether you're an elderly person or a baby. He is for all of us. I love in Revelation chapter 19 that it gives us a wonderful picture of Jesus. Jesus, the warrior king. A lot of us look at Jesus and we just think he's just mild-mannered, that he just comes to heal, that he comes to soothe. All of those things is true, but there is another contrast, which is also a reality. It's that Jesus is your warrior king. He comes to fight for you. He comes to deliver you. He comes to vanish the enemy from you. And we see that so distinctly at the cross, at the cross where Jesus was crucified, where the blood is running down him, where he experiencing all of the anguish, but he would have not stopped for a moment because of his love for you. God is bigger than all of our circumstances. And it's really very, very, very important that you see that as a reality. When you're looking at a situation, that situation might overcome you. But I want you to start changing that thinking and begin to think, God is bigger than my situation. God is bigger than my circumstances. There is a question then that arises. And the question has to be a personal evaluation. You have to really look at your life closely and you have to ask yourself, what star are you following? What is it that is leading you? What are you allowing to direct your path? What are you allowing to direct your life. We see that the three wise men had purpose, had intentionality. They were following the star that was sent by God. They had a path that they were going to go to and nothing was going to dissuade them from that path. We have to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, what are we allowing 
in our life to take control, to take precedence? What are we allowing? And I want you to think about that word, allowing. A lot of times you hear that, that phrase, the devil made me do it. But oftentimes, it's not the devil. He might send temptation. Yes, he wants to kill and destroy you. But the reality is, is that you are allowing yourself to follow that distraction. And the enemy's design like Herod, is to deviate your path, is to kill you. We have the wise men worshiping Jesus, but there is Herod the king who's designing a plan to kill and to destroy Jesus and the wise men. The wise men followed that star closely. It was a divine moment. My question for you again, I have to repeat it because I want you to take that self-examination. What star are you following? And remember the title of the message was follow the right star. So what star are you following? Is it ambition? In ambition, a person who is just overly ambitious you're going to do whatever it takes to reach your goal. You don't care who you hurt. You don't care who you betray. Your sole goal is ambition. And you see, that was part of King Herod's problem. He was going to do anything to keep his position. Is ambition what you're following? Or is it wealth? Is money so important to you that you would give up time, that you would give up family activities, that you would give up going to church faithfully, that you would be giving up on prayer because all that you do is pursuing money. How often do people say, I can't go to church because I have to work? And yes, there are circumstances that you do have to work. But be mindful. Is it that you have to work for responsibility or because that is your assignment? A police officer has an assignment. EMTs have assignments that they have to take care of. But there are other opportunities that you can maintain that connection with God. Certainly, pastor has a slew of devotionals online that you can go anytime to maintain that connection with God. We have services online so that even though you have to work or you have an assignment, you can tune in into those services to keep yourself connected with God. Do you follow the star of pleasure? That's all you're interested in. Pleasure. Pleasure here, pleasure there. And that's where for many people, addictions are lurking in the shadows. And after that constant satisfaction of pleasure, it is they are in control of you. So again, is pleasure the star that you follow? And this is an unusual one that, one that I'm going to mention now. Is family the star that you family? And what I mean is, it's not that you're not to love your family. It's not that you should uh, care for them. It's not that you should provide for their needs. But I'm talking about the mindset that family comes first no matter what. You will do anything for them. And very quietly, very subtly, you put Jesus to the side. You see, your desire for your family overcomes the desire to please Jesus. Jesus is not the number one in your life anymore. So although it might seem strange to mention that, but I have seen where family comes first. I have seen where certain groups of people, the culture 
comes first. It doesn't matter about God. It doesn't matter the things about Jesus. It's whatever the culture dictates. It's what you follow and what you do. Is your star that you're following selfishness? I want what I want when I want it. Also, your star could be laziness, or it could be worry, or it could be fear. It is a very significant time in our lives now that we examine our heart and that we determine who are we following? Is Jesus a priority in your life? Is worshiping him in a priority in your life? Is reading the word of God a priority in your life? Now remember, we're coming to 2021 shortly. And this is a great opportunity for you to examine your heart and to ask yourself, what am I allowing to direct my life? Am I worshiping the way I should? Am I reading the word the way I should? Am I praying the way I should? In 2021, I would recommend that you take the path of the wise men. They obeyed. They followed. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. They were not going to be dissuaded. They were not going to be pulled in another direction. They had a goal, and that goal had to be completed. And their goal was to find the Messiah. Their goal was to find the child Jesus. And when they found him, their response was worship. Worship. They were intentional. They were prepared. They brought their gifts when they saw the child question. When was the last time that you took the time to worship God, to worship Christ? Not asking him for anything, just quietly in a little place, in a little corner, tucked away, worshiping. And worship is not about music and it is not about the tone of your voice. My husband will tell you his voice is not the fineness. His voice is not like Andrea Bocelli, but he loves to worship. And he loves to walk around my house. In fact, when he watches the um, online services and they're worshiping, what he does is that he just walks around the house and he just begins to worship the Lord. And as he makes every circle around the house, he gets louder and louder and louder. Because again, it's not the quality of the voice. It's what's in the heart that you express to the king. Worship the Lord. Make it a point this year to worship more often. We at Calvary give great opportunities. We have night of worship. And pastor doesn't preach a message. There's no offerings that are collected. The emphasis for that night is literally to worship God. We want to lift up our praises to him. When was the last time that you worship Christ? Or better yet, when was the last time you said, thank you? Thank you, Lord, that car didn't hit me. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me enough to pay that bill. Thank you, Lord, I am not sick. Thank you, Lord, that you're looking after me. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. When I needed a good idea, you gave it to me. Thank you, Lord, for that wisdom. And remember, God protects his people. He warned the wise men, take another route. And they were obedient. And therefore, they were not killed. They obeyed and their lives were saved. Is God warning you about something? Is, is he tugging at your heart? Is he kind of knocking at your heart? Do you feel kind of like a discomfort? Is God trying to give you a warning signal? Are you listening? 
Spend time with God and find out. Listen closely to him. What gift can you bring to Jesus? The first gift to bring to the Lord is your love. My personal prayer lately, this is me, my personal prayer lately is that I might fall in love with Jesus more and more each day. That's what I pray. I say, Holy Spirit, please help me to fall in love with Jesus, to fall in love with God, to fall in love with you each and every day more and more. And then my other prayer is, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, give me words that I tell others about Jesus. You know, I am convinced that the coming of Jesus to take the church to heaven is coming very, very soon. If you ask me, well, Pastor Yvonne, when do you think that's going to happen? I don't know when it's going to happen. It could happen five years, 10, 15, 20. But we are told in the word of God that we should live our lives ready 24-7 in preparation to be taken home with the Lord. And I am so concerned. I can't tell you how the concern in my heart for people that come to church or others that hear the word or others that hear the word on their, um, whether it's a laptop, their device, their phones, wherever it is, and always are tempted they're getting close. They're, they're, they're tempted to cross the line. They're tempted to say, Jesus, live in my heart. But they never take that step. And my prayer this morning is if you are the person who's, who's right at the edge, don't wait any longer. Don't hesitate. Step over and say, oh, Jesus, fill my heart. Forgive my sins. The Bible tells us, that we should love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our being. And it also says loving God is one, but number two is loving your neighbor as yourself. That's why I'm so concerned for people. I want to see them change. I want to see them saved. Very recently, I had an opportunity to pray with someone, and they were literally days from passing away. And I got a call from someone, and the someone told me, call this person, Yvonne, because they're, they're, they're close to, to dying. So I called the person up, and I asked them, do you want Jesus now? And the person said, yes, without hesitation. You see, this person had been saying, nah, get away from me. Nah, I'm not interested. Oh, not now, not now, not now. But the moment came in his life that he said, yes, I want Jesus. We were able to pray. And it is God's goodness. And it's God's love for this individual that he gave him those days. Because in a very few days afterwards, he was gone. But we can say with confidence, we can say with confidence that he is in heaven with the Lord. You see, you make the choice between heaven and hell. And I bless God for giving this individual that opportunity to say, yes, Lord, I want you in my heart. Do people see Jesus in you? Can they say, wow. We see Jesus in that person because of their life, because of their life style, because of the actions they take. They are reflecting Jesus. You see, the wise men spoke with actions. They were steady. They were faithful. They brought gold. They were prepared. They brought frankincense to Jesus. Now, frankincense has a wonderful aroma, has a wonderful smell about it, and a lovely 
aroma. When you walk into a room and frankincense has been poured out, you say, wow, what's that fabulous aroma? What's that fabulous smell? It's lovely. And one thing about frankincense is it is not stinky. We want people to ask us, how come you're nice? How come you're helpful? How come you're so different? You want to reflect Jesus. You want to be wise people. And the first step in being wise is to ask Jesus into your heart. I would hope that everyone viewing this service this morning can say yes, affirmative, absolutely. I have Jesus in my heart. But in case you don't, it's not too late. This is your moment in time. You're watching this for a purpose. You can say a simple prayer. And you can repeat after me, by the way. Jesus, forgive my sins. I accept you in my heart. I want you to be my personal savior. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit, with your precious Holy Spirit. I want to be part of the family of God. Be the Lord of my life and guide my steps every day. If you repeated that prayer, you have been what they say, born again. The Spirit of God comes in you, and it happens instantaneously. So if you have said that prayer this morning, you can be assured, you can be 100% sure that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Or if you're the kind of person that you can actually say, you know what, I need a personality change. I don't want my sense when I step into a room would be stinky. I want to reflect Jesus wherever you go. I want to enter a room and bring in with me a wonderful aroma, not an unpleasant one. And you can have your private time with the Lord, and you can just... Literally, talk to him as if you were talking to your best friend. Now, I'm going to pray now to end the service. And after prayer, I have a special announcement for you. But let's bow our heads now for prayer. Dear Jesus, I pray that in 2021, Lord, that we would worship you more. That we would fall in love with you more. That, Lord, you would be the priority in our life, that you would be our sun, shining star, that we would follow you in all circumstances and situations. Lord, you tell us in your book that yes, there will be trouble. Yes, there will be tribulation. Yes, there will be hard times, but you also give us the promise that you have overcome all of these things. I pray for each and every one that's watching online. I pray a bucket of blessings over them. I pray for those that are ill with whatever, that in the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood of Jesus, that you might be healed. I pray for those that are waiting, whether for a surgery or for whatever it is, Father, that this moment that they would be healed in the name of Jesus. Guide us this day, Lord. And Father, let our 2021 star be you, Jesus. We thank you. We love you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.